Hey everyone, this is Neil from Real Terrain Hobbies, making all things miniature. And today we're tasked with a challenge to see if we can make something really interesting with this massive amount of terrain from Mantic. Now this is a collaboration with my good buddy Luke from Geek Gaming Scenics who actually contacted me and asked if I wanted to do this with him. So Mantic is to supply us with the terrain, which is actually, according to Luke, the most versatile, robust, sci-fi terrain system that there is period so big claim i don't know that's a pretty bold claim so we're gonna test that out and see what we can make with this stuff and see if it really is as robust and intricate and crazy as luke says it is and yes if you haven't figured it out yet this video is sponsored by mantic so one thing I knew I wanted in this project was a really cool water feature, a big chunk of resin with something cool inside. I thought that would be perfect for this. So I went and designed this kind of around that feature. All right, so right off the bat here, I just want to quickly mention that I'm in the middle of running my very first Kickstarter ever. We're almost at the halfway mark and this thing is fully funded in all of 45 minutes. So what this is, is your chance to get your hands on some exquisitely crafted 3D printable terrain, 100% made by yours truly. And if you don't have a 3D printer, now's a good excuse to go out and get one as they've never been as affordable as they are now. We've already knocked off four stretch goals with the fourth being an entire building a fully modeled water mill i'm so excited for that and then there's a tavern after that a blacksmith and an inn to add on to the tavern interiors for the buildings and a ton more go check it out there's only three days left on the early bird and that gets you absolutely everything including all the stretch goals and if you happen to miss the early bird well it's only a few bucks extra that gets you all the same stuff so excited for this links down in the description below all right, so getting back to our design here and where we're gonna be taking this, I really like those little tanks. Kind of set the theme for the whole project. I wanted those for a pretty strong sci-fi element. And what I had in mind is a secret government underground laboratory that uh, is experimenting on these kind of alien creatures within. And then there's something that goes horribly wrong. Now, Probably what is the best feature with this terrain is that it has these tabs that it comes with that everything clips together using tabs and you don't even need to use glue if you don't want to. I did every now and then, but I know a couple of people that have actually been poisoned from the fumes from contact cement or from super glue and it's not something you want to have happen to you. Also it can burn your eyes really badly. So I was using my mask. But the fact that it has these friction fit tabs eliminated the need for so much glue, which was perfect. Now, quick shout out to my mini factory. They were kind enough to send me this bottle of resin for my 3D printer. I actually got a few models as well from their site, uh, including this guy right here, which you will see assembled soon. So go check them out and I'll have a link again in the description below. Now, moving back to these tanks, I wanted to do something really cool with these. Rather than just paint them, I wanted them to actually hold some aliens, which are what these things are. These are kind of alien spores. And uh, so basically, I created a mold out of these things to fill it up with some transparent resin and fit the little alien spores inside. So the resin I'm using here is a deep pour resin. It can be poured up to an inch and a half, but it takes 72 hours to cure. Now, while they're curing, we've got this guy here. This is the behemoth. This is the Kraken. Again, I got this from my mini factory and I'll have a link for that guy down below in the description. But now it's time to quickly paint this. I wanted to speed paint this. I actually did this really quick. The airbrush made such fast work out of this guy and I'm really happy with the results and this is just such a sick model and is really going to add to the story and bring this whole project to life. So we got our Kraken model varnished and hanging to dry there now and it's time to get on with the base. We got to get this resin poured early. Again it's 
72 hour resin uh, cure time and we got to do two pours and I don't have enough time to do wait the full 72 hours for the first pour and then pour the second one after that. So I'm going to be actually pouring my second pour at about halfway in to the 72 hours of the first pour just to save on time. So we're going to slap on this Vallejo earth texture, texture up the rocks. I'm going to be priming with some black and then we're going to paint the actual terrain elements here. And I'm going to be using a yellow underneath, but for yellow, you want to use white first and then put the yellow on. It just helps it to get nice and bright. And we're going to be using some chipping effects here for the paint. So we got the yellow underlay. I'm going over top of it with a pale blue and then you just use a wet brush and uh, it actually helps the paint to go away. So you can actually use a spray or a hairspray for that as well if you want. You just get a lot more control using it through the airbrush this way than a big massive uh, can of hairspray. So we're getting things prepped here for the big huge resin pour. I want to make sure that things are matching up and going to fit well afterwards i don't want to pour all that resin and then realize that my two pieces were too close together or too far apart without the top piece being able to properly fit on so again using the deep pour resin here uh, you want to measure this out fairly meticulously and a big actually shout out to rob from my patreon discord he actually gave me this great tip of tinting all the resin that you need like measuring it out beforehand tinting it because I'm going to be doing two pours here, so you want them both to match up perfectly. So he gave me the tip to tint it all right off the bat, and that way when you go to do the second pour, it's going to match up perfectly. There's going to be no lines. And also shout out to Tyler as well from the Patreon Discord. He's also seen it done where you can just tint the whole bottle of resin if you're going to be using that color kind of frequently. And then when you go to add the hardener in, it's all going to be perfectly matched and you're not going to get any variation whatsoever. So once upon a time, I was actually heavily involved in construction. I was actually what is known as a sprinkler fitter. So I'm basically a pipe fitter that is specializing in fire suppression. And I would do anything all from installs in a new construction to uh, service work. And I even did quite a few number of industrial jobs. So we have these big massive potash mines here. So in a way, a lot of what I'm making here is actually sort of modeled after my knowledge of mechanical rooms and also big industrial plants like the potash mines we've got here. So that's actually where a lot of my inspiration for this project comes from is that uh, mechanical knowledge but uh, you'll see I'm making some I-beams here out of some cardstock and yes I know I'm gonna get some complaints that there is very little scratch building being done here I am making this from these plastic kits now the great thing about that is that you don't have to be super skilled in your scratch building t uh, abilities you can use this and it, it, the way Luke described it is Lego for adults which I would completely 100% agree and you can just let your mind go wild you can dry fit things as well so you don't have to worry about anything being permanent you can fit it together see how it looks and if you don't like how things are turning out you can change your mind and switch it up that way so yeah as far as versatility goes, this is a very versatile system. I'm liking how things are going with it. And you can see just how easy it is to just snap these things together. And look at that. We've already got a second level complete and made just like that. So it's time for resin pour number two. And when you're doing this, make sure that you calculate exactly how much resin you need. And I am realizing right away I did not mix enough. So now we got to color match things again. You can see I upped the saturation here. The left is too blue. We got to make it more green to match up. It's still too blue. And we try it a third time. And close enough. I think that's pretty close match. But just make sure that you figure out the right amount to begin with. 
Now I'm gonna use the actual liquid resin on the model here to make it wet. It's just coming out of the water. It's obviously gotta be very glossy and wet and the resin is the perfect uh, medium to make that happen. So now it's time to check out our little alien pods. And uh, it's been this full 72 hours now, things have fully cured. And we're gonna take a look and see how things turned out. So they turn out pretty opaque actually. And there's a little bit of a rim on the bottom. We're just gonna sand that off, uh, varnish these up and that'll make them nice and clear. There's a lot of bubbles in there still, but that actually looks kind of cool. You can imagine the bubbles kind of bubbling up as you walk up and see this crazy alien creature inside. Now I've got these nano LEDs here. We're gonna add some of those in. It's gonna add such a nice effect. I'm gonna chop the bottoms off of the old tanks and we're gonna use those later on for the bottoms of these guys. Now I discovered something awful and that is a leak in our resin and it doesn't matter how tiny your little leak is, the whole thing can come out overnight and you'll be left with a massive puddle of resin everywhere. And I spent a whole half hour taping this thing up with packing tape, really making sure the whole thing was sealed off. The last thing you want to do is have all that crazy expensive resin just leak right on out. All right, so the basic design of our secret underground military lab kind of more or less laid out. It's time to get on to painting and man, having an airbrush makes this process so, so nice. As you can see, makes for quick work. Now, learning the airbrush, there is a lot of finicky stuff you need to learn. There's a lot of clogging. You gotta figure out why it's clogging. There's lots of issues. The more experience you get with it, the easier it gets and the faster it is to problem solve and get that stuff sorted out. But it really makes for quick work on a project like this and there's no brush strokes or anything left on the model afterwards. And it's just the perfect tool for the job. And now it's time to give a massive thank you to all my amazing patrons of all levels. Huge thank you to all of you and especially a huge thank you to the soldiers of the Real Train Hobbies Royal Guard, my man Julian, newly promoted Ted Howard, and the ever so lovely Robin Boone. Massive thank you to you three for your incredible support. And again, a huge thank you to all my patrons and helping me to produce these videos through your financial support. All right, so along with the painting, we're doing a bunch of weathering as well. I've got a few different products here. I've got a rust effect, as well as two different types of grimes. And then we're also putting together these tanks. they are alien tanks. I decided to go with a white for those guys. And uh, I think that's the best route to go with that. We're also making this little area. It's kind of the cleaner area. <laughs> Uh, seeing as this is an industrial plant, we want kind of a cleaner area where the scientists belong. And so that's where I put those tanks. All right, now I saw this already on the Mantic boxes itself, on the paint schemes that they had done for those. And I just had to do it here too. We put D9, we're assuming this is part of a larger complex and this is just Bay D9 or you could call it District 9. <laughs> kind of a little shout out to the movie there. But uh, yeah, so we got those on there. Now it's just painting up these engines, these generators and uh, pumps and things and installing those, putting those into place. Everything is color coded in an industrial plant. Everything uh, from the different types of piping. So the big uh, kind of bluish green pipes there would be the processing pipes so in a mine that would have the uh, potash product in it uh, the white could be something specialized for the aliens uh, yellow is gas lines red are fire suppression 
and then uh, supports can be blue. Yeah, everything has its own color. Now, one thing that always levels up a project that you're working on is LEDs. Gotta add some LEDs in here. I got these nano LEDs here still. Uh, so I added some on the bottom, which is gonna light up the water. As you can see, here's my wiring. They're kind of bus bars with the positive and the negative, each attaching to those. Keeps things really nice and simple. And then I've drilled holes in the back wall for the uh, test tubes, the alien tubes there, or not tubes, uh, what's the word, tanks, the alien tanks. So yeah, so then we're just going to uh, wire things up from the back side there and we will have LEDs. Now I do have some Woodland Scenics stick-on LEDs left over. These are perfect. Like the, I was worried about the yellow or the orange I guess, but it just looks so good and ah, couldn't have been better. So now it's grabbing the water. We're gonna take off, we're gonna, we'll demold everything and add the top on to the base. Luckily everything matches up and now it's just a matter of adding in the rock walls. All I'm doing for that is grabbing some more styrofoam using the hot wire foam cutter and just uh, kind of going up, up <laughs> in an upward direction there, if that makes sense adding some watered down Mod Podge and going with my tested and true method for adding grout. Uh, two different colors of grout, a gray and a brown, going more gray than brown, and then some sand on top of that. You wet it down with a spray bottle and then sprinkle on some more Mod Podge to seal things off and you have the perfect rocked texture. So we thoroughly put Mantic's system here through the ringer and put it to the test and man, I gotta say, really, really impressed. Does it hold up to Luke's claims? I would say yes. Look at this. Look at what we've got here. If you want to check out Luke's video, go check out his. He's taken a bit of a different approach and really showing off the modularity as far as gaming goes, whereas I kind of took everything together to really push it to the max to see what you can make. And honestly, Mantic made this so easy. This was such an enjoyable project. And just look at this. The results speak entirely for themselves. So again, a massive thank you to Mantic for sponsoring this video. Go check them out and make some amazing terrain for yourself. <laughs>